Destiny International Christian Assembly, bringing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ directly into the comfort of your home. And thank you for tuning in on a weekly basis and allowing me in the comfort of your home. We appreciate your love. May the Lord bless you. I'm speaking on the subject of divine success, and this is part five. If you have missed any of those, please connect on our Facebook or YouTube and pick up one, two, three, four, and today is the fifth. But on today, I'm focusing on what I have called discovering your purpose, finding out why you are created, what's the reason why you are created, no matter who you are or what you do right now, um, your job right now may not define who you are. Um, the circumstances around you does not define who you are. Who defines who you are is God. And because God is your creator, just like any other manufacturer, every manufacturer designs the purpose of its good. So this is very important for you to know. This is very important for us to know as we look at the subject of div uh, discovering your purpose. Life is governed by principle. It doesn't matter if you like it or you agree with it or not. Your life and my life is governed by principle. And it's so important that if I understand that life is governed by principle and I respect those principles and not only respect them, I buy into them, then my life will not be a struggle life. It will be a struggle-free life. It will not be full of depression and oppression. The people that are oppressed and depressed, I've said this many times, the people that are depressed in life are people who do not know their purpose. They don't know where they are going. They don't know what life is doing to them. They don't know. They, they are full of, I don't know why this, I don't know where, I don't know what. Their mind is confused because they do not know their purpose. The Bible says, they that know their God, they will be strong and they will do what? Exploit. Once you know and respect your purpose, I mean, once you know and respect divine principles, your journey to success will be fun. Circumstances will not change you or situations will not change you. If you know your purpose and they fire you at work, they, they stop you because of coronavirus, it will not change you. It will not depress you because you know your purpose. Jesus knew why he was born. He says, I was born for this purpose. That's why he endured crisis. He endured the cross because he knows his purpose. This is very, very important that unless we re know and respect the principles of life, success becomes a journey, I mean, becomes a, a dream and not a reality. Success is not arriving at a destination. Success is a journey. This is why John Maxwell says to us, success is knowing your purpose. He says, knowing your purpose. And he says, once you know your purpose, you take responsibility. You grow to the maximum potential of your purpose. Not just knowing it, but you've got to grow it. You've got to develop it. Your skill is not enough. Your skill is enough when you develop it to the maximum potential. That's when success comes. Um, you become successful in life. Success is not arriving at a destination. Success is a journey. You can, be, you can possess a degree, bachelor degree, but you, that doesn't make you successful. It's just you're beginning another journey. You need the bachelor degree to get to where you are going. So don't, don't isolate your mind to be because now I've been waiting to get this degree. I've been waiting to get this job. I've been waiting to get this bike. I've been waiting to buy this type of car. Some people think because they are driving a Jaguar or Mercedes, they are successful. I told you many times that wealth doesn't make you successful. 
You could be so wealthy and you're spending so much money looking for happiness. So it, it, because somebody is wealthy, it doesn't make it necessary the person is successful. But obviously, if you're wealthy and successful, you may be wealthy. So we should not pursue things because we are looking for success. Success is not happiness. Because the day you are not happy, that means you are not successful. Happiness is determined by your mood, by event of things. Somebody bash into your car, you're not going to be happy. So happiness is not success. So we need to be very careful how we define success. If you listen and receive the teaching for today, your life will never be the same. And this is why we must understand that life may continue to spell frustration or oppression if you reject the principles of life. A person that rejects the principle is saying, basically, I reject life. I reject what God has planned for me, purposed for me, prepared for me, even before the foundation of the world. Write this down. It's very, very important. The reason Jesus came to earth is to provide restoration for you. This is the reason Jesus came. Jesus came to redeem. Jesus came to restore. Jesus came to reconcile. Jesus came to renew. Now I want you to look at the word renew. Reconcile. Redeem. It's because something had been lost. It's because something was there before and he came back to restore it. The question you and I need to ask is this, what is he restoring us to? And what is he restoring us from? What is he restoring us to? Rather, sorry, us to, and what is he restoring to us? Those are the two questions. Because if Jesus came to restore, he's restoring something to us, and it's restoring us to something. This is very, very important in order for you to understand what restoration is all about. Number one, Jesus came to restore us back to himself. And number two, to restore man back to his image. And number three, which is very important, restore back the dominion that we lost in the garden. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 God gave man dominion. God gave us a specific area on earth to dominate. You are not created to dominate human being. Anywhere anyone feels he has the right to dominate people, employers dominating their employees, husband dominating their wife, wives dominating their husband, pastor dominating the church, it's witchcraft. It's demon possessed when there is domination. God does not give any man the right to dominate another man. But he gave us area to dominate. He, he asked us to dominate the earth. Every circumstances and situation that comes your way, you have the power to dominate it in the name of Jesus. So, we need to understand that until we discover our purpose, it is difficult to fulfill our assignment on earth. The purpose of your salvation, as I've said, is not to go to heaven. Even though heaven is there for us, we are citizens of heaven. But that's not the reason Jesus came to take you to heaven. Because if that's the reason Jesus came to take you to heaven, then what will happen to the earth? Now listen to this. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 18, we were told what we are created. We are created to do something. Ephesians 2, 18. It says, we are created, Ephesians 2, 8, sorry. Uh, no, Ephesians 2, 10, my bad. It said, we are created to be a workmanship. Now listen to this. Created in Christ Jesus to do good work. The question Billions, perhaps, of people fail to ask is, what is my good work? What is my purpose? He said it there. We are created for work. That God has ordained or destined for us so that we should walk in those purpose. 
What's your purpose? What's my purpose? What's the reason you came to this earth? Oh, you came to this earth to suffer, or you came to this earth to carry the cross, or you came to this earth to wake up, rise up in the morning, go to work, come back home, give birth to children, go to work, come back home, cook rice, go to work, come back home, wash the floor, cook work, go, 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 shout at your children, wake up in the morning. Is that the purpose? Is that all you are created for? No, I can, I can hire a maid to do that. What are you created for? What, what's your purpose on earth? I said in the first or second message that if you are not impacting somebody's life, your life is a wasted life. Abraham is my friend. Can I do anything without informing this gentleman, knowing that he will influence people? And David served his own generation, and he was not. He served his generation. Jesus did not save you to take you to heaven. Jesus saved us so that we can fulfill our purpose on earth. This is important. Christianity is not just carrying Bible and reading the Lord's Prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. No, that's not the Lord's Prayer. That is David Psalm 23. Thy Father who art in heaven, I love thy name, thy king. Is that the Lord's Prayer? Thy kingdom come, thy name. Our Father who art in heaven, I love thy name. It's, it's, that's, that's not Christianity. That's religion. Christianity is a way of life. Christianity is becoming little Christ and, f- and, and fulfilling your purpose on earth. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, He said, let your light so shine that people may see your purpose and then give glory to God in heaven. So we must understand that life is about purpose until you understand your purpose. Ephesians 2.10 that you see on the screen there, make, make it clear. We are created in Christ Jesus for good work. He, God, prepare, ordain in advance even before your mother knows your, your father. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Before my mother ever grew up to become a, a, a teenager and then met my father one day, God has already prepared me a purpose. God has already prepared your life. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10 says that. It says, God, finish you. And then he went back into thousands of, or whatever decades or millions of years, I don't know. And then he prepared you and gave you to your father. He says, it declares your end even before you begin it. Find out your purpose. Your purpose is not to have a hairstyle and makeup and wear designer's shirt and wake up in the morning and well, that's not your purpose. And we focus on the things that should find us rather than focus on the things that should make us. And this is why, Christian, you can be born again and be miserable. You can be born again and still suffer. You can be born again and become a slave. When the Bible says you are not the tail, you are the head. Find out your purpose. God was speaking to the children of Israel. He said, listen, my aim is to make you successful. My aim is to give you good success. However, you must follow hard my principle. It says this book of principles should not depart from you. If you want to be successful, this is the book. Follow the principles. So it's very, very important for us to understand this, that we must discover our purpose. What are the good works created for you and I to fulfill on this earth. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible says, We speak the wisdom of God, which is secret. We speak the wisdom of God, which is mystery. And then he went on, he said, 
even the hidden secrets of God, which God predestinate. King James says, which God ordained before the world began unto, can we read the last two words together, please? One, two, go. Unto our, so I want you to notice four words. Wisdom of God, wisdom. Mystery, which is secret. And they are hidden in God. Now, the next two words is predestinate or ordained. And the last two words is our glory. So, God has his purpose. Only him knows the purpose because it's hidden in him. And he said he has ordained it before you are born for your success. For your glory. So you can become, so you can shine. So you can be above and not below. So you don't have to suffer frustration and stagnation. He said, it's for your glory. This is why in Isaiah 46, 10, I declare your end before the beginning. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts, the plan that I have towards you is the plan to give you good success. Every man wants to be successful. King James says, your expected end. So, you must find out. You must find out what is the good work that God has created for you. Your purpose is hidden only in God. And only God can show it to you. This brings the next big question in our life. Why did God keep this secret? Why didn't he give it to us? Because Adam sinned, and when Adam sinned, when God created Adam, he said Adam had the Holy Spirit living in him. So when Adam sinned, God took the Holy Spirit, and Adam became a wanderer on the earth. For over seven, bi seven billion, I was going to say, Seven billion people in the world for over 7,000 years has been wondering what's their purpose on earth. No wonder. Listen to me. A psychologist doesn't know your purpose. A psychiatrist doesn't know your purpose. I have my friend sitting down here. When the first time I met him, you know, he told me, nobody told me these things. And if you don't mind, if I can use him as an example, we all remember when he came here for the first time. And we opened up the word of God to him and said, this is the word of God. He was mentally drained, psychologically oppressed, oppressed by the church, oppressed by the system of the world, oppressed by family. And in his own words, if I can use it, he said, Jesus, heal me just because his eyes were open to the truth. Your psychologist doesn't know you. They try to help you, but they don't know themselves. Because the Bible says clearly that it is God that knows your purpose, not even your parents. How many parents have tried to tell children, this is what you should become, this is what you should become? You go to school and you go to your psychologist and he sat you down for career development, uh, career whatever, and they talk you into becoming something. They cannot find your purpose. Look at your neighbor say he's talking about you. Look at yourself say that's also for me. No man knows your purpose. Am I making sense? No man knows your purpose. It's very, very important. It says, your purpose is hidden in God, which God ordained before the foundation of the world. There was nobody there that was there when God put your purpose in his mind. And he said, that purpose is for your glory. It's for be successful. The word glory here can be translated as full of weight. The word glory can also be translated as essence. So, for your excellence, God, give me 1 Corinthians 2, 7. It says, for our glory, for our essence, the, 
the reason God created us is for glory. So God is saying here that your true essence is to find me. Your true essence is to find me. If you find me, then you will find your glory. Because if you find me, I will tell you your purpose. And once I tell you your purpose, you are on your way to success. And that will be our portion in Jesus' name. I said that will be our portion in Jesus' name. So, this is why I said it is not in our education. It is not in our marriage. It is not in our parents. It is not in the government. It is not in the system of the world. Because that person is doing something and it seems right. doesn't necessarily mean he knows his purpose. Or she knows her purpose. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is destruction. Listen, how many of us sitting down here has gone through a journey, gone through something that seems to be okay, then we come to a junction and something happened, and all the works we have put and all the thoughts we had that these things was okay, when we come to that junction, we then begin to realize that maybe it's not okay. Am I the only one? Because unless God show you, anyone that labor, labors in vain. Your labor will never be in vain again in Jesus' name. So, God, number one plan for you and I is to get us to know our purpose. And God has been knocking on your door for so long. He's been asking you, come on to me, all you that weary and heavy laden. Let me show you your purpose. No, I don't want you, God. No, if I can only have husband. No, if I can only have wife. No, if I can only have good job. No, if I can only have car. No, if I can only leave this country. God says, come, come, come. I have your secret. I have the reason why I create you. But I need you to come and seek me. Seek me why I may be found. This is why I'm convinced many Christians are suffering today. What we are supposed to acquire in 40 days, we acquired in 40 years. And somebody who says he's a Christian, a child of God, may never taste success until Jesus comes. Remember what I always say the person of Jesus saves us. Are you with me? I said, are you listening? The person of Jesus saves you. I believe in the Lord Jesus. You save. That's how simple salvation is all about. But it's the principle of Jesus that guarantees any man on earth success. And you don't have to be born again to, have, to be successful. Does that mean, am I making sense? There are people who does not know Jesus there, and they are successful in what they are doing. Because they follow the principle, like, like what is his name, John uh, uh, Owen said um, uh, 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 when he won the Olympic. He said, my, my coach told me what I need to do to be successful, and I followed it. And I, that's why I won four gold medals in the Olympics. And they said, what is it? He said, my coach told me my discipline, my dedication, my determination, and the right attitude. He said, I follow them, and this is why today you're still hearing about Jesse Owens. I shared with you about Michael Jordan. We were not told that these two people are born again believers. So we must understand that since only God knows your purpose, then as followers of Jesus, next verse is the key. To what you and I need to know. Give me verse 9. Of, it says, eyes have not known, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man what the Lord has in store for you. Now, King James says what the Lord has prepared. Ephesians 1, 2, 10 said, he has prepared before the foundation of the world. Isaiah 46, 10 says, he has declared your end before the beginning. So, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, um, 2.9 says, What the Lord has predestinated for those who love him. 
So we need God to find out our purpose. No single person on, on earth knows your purpose. Only God. In verse, in verse 10, give me verse 10. Listen to this now. Please listen to this. But God has revealed them to you. By what? By his spirit. For it is only the spirit of God that searches the deep things of God. Listen. God himself is already deep. But he says there are even deeper stuff in God that only the Holy Spirit knows. This is why if you don't fellowship with the Holy Spirit, if you don't worship the Holy Spirit, if you don't convert, I mean, develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis, if you don't create time, you and the Holy Spirit, you may never know your purpose. Because he's the carrier of your purpose. You're sitting down there, for those of you who are married, your husband or your wife may not know what you are thinking deep in your mind or not even your best friend unless you say it out of your mouth. Am I making sense? I said, am I making sense? But who knows what you are thinking? Your spirit. So, it does, this is not... This is not rocket science, or this is not a, a, a revelation that it's only the Spirit of God that knows the deep things of God. And then the Bible tells us that it is only the Holy Spirit that can give us, that can tell us what is the mind of God for us. I've said many times here, the Holy Spirit is the Lord over the church of Jesus Christ. If you push the Holy Spirit aside, God the Father is on his throne in heaven. Jesus is in heaven on the right hand of God. It's the Holy Spirit that runs the church of Jesus Christ. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit is vital to your purpose here on earth. Write that down, hashtag it, and put it on your Facebook or your Instagram. The Holy Spirit is vital to your purpose on earth. Never forget that. It is vital your salvation or your redemption and without knowing the Holy Spirit, we are busy wasting our time, busy wasting our talent and busy wasting our lives. If you are not born again, you are lost because unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus said and Jesus cannot lie. But if you are born again and you don't have relationship with the Holy Spirit, you will struggle on this side of eternity. Now, I said this as I begin to round up. No human being knows your purpose. Do you agree with me? Now, give me Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. Let me show you something about Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Verse 49. They went to Jerusalem and they left Jesus, their son, in the temple unknowingly. And they've gone back home thinking Jesus was in the midst of the people. When everybody has arrived home, they didn't find their son and they realized they left him back in Jerusalem. A, a day or two journey back. And when they got back, they said to Jesus, where are you and what have you done to us? Mary was not happy that this, you know, the woman is gone back and forth. Look at what Jesus said there. He said, did you not know that I'm, a, I'm fulfilling the purpose where I came? Not even Mary that the angel visited knows Jesus' purpose. Isn't that something for us to know that to we need God to show us our purpose. Not even Mary. This shows that not even our parent knows our purpose. It's very, very important. The secret of God are the thoughts of God. Jeremiah 29, 11. The secret of God are the thoughts of God concerning you. The secret of God are his thoughts. Not the thoughts of your priest. Not the thought of theologian, 
not the thought of your advisor, the secret of God. Your purpose is the thought of God for you. What is the reason why God sent you through your parents? Listen, if you are born by prostitute, you still have a purpose on earth. Can I hear amen? If you are thrown in the garbage bin, you still have a purpose to fulfill. It doesn't matter which channel you came from. And this is why you don't allow your condition to determine your destination. Don't allow it to be that. Don't allow it. We are told that the first, what is his name? I think it's uh, J.F. Kennedy. Never finished. He has never had degree. We are told that, the, the, uh, uh, um, what is his name? Um, the, the founder of Apple didn't finish school. Let me close with this scripture. Only the Holy Spirit can give us the revelation of who, what our purpose is. And David said this clearly in Psalm 139 verse 15. He says, my substance are hid from thee when I was made in secret. My substance was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. You know what he's talking about? This is why anyone that commits abortion and kills a baby in the womb, you are hell bound unless you give your life, repent and give your life to Jesus. This is why you can't say that thing in the womb is not a human being yet. It's there. My unformed body in you is not secret. He said, and you curiously, carefully wrought me in the lowest part of the earth. Give me verse 17. Verse 17 here says, 16, give me 16 before 17. It says, your eyes did see my unformed body, being still not formed. Perfect. And it says, in, in your book, all my members are written. Every single day of your life is being programmed in the book of God. And then he said, Without, with this imperfection, you still continue to fashion me. Still continue to fashion me. Verse 17 says, um, how, precious, how precious are your works to me. Verse 17, please. How precious are your works. I mean, are your thoughts. You see, the thought of God is your purpose. How precious are your thoughts? If I have to number them, he said the sand of the sea, it's, it's, it's too little compared to the thoughts of God for your life. As I close here, I want you to know that success is knowing your purpose. Success is what? Success is what? And taking responsibility to reach your maximum potential. And then sow the seed of that will benefit other people. This is the last part of my series on divine success. I hope and I trust in the name of Jesus that God has dropped something in your heart. If you're watching us for the first time, this is Destiny International Christian Assembly. Overcomers Chapel, I'm Pastor Jide with the alternative, bringing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ directly into the comfort of your home. You can reach us on any of the numbers of the screen, uh, 799-42261, 799-42262, or you can reach us by email, info at dicamalta.org, or you can visit us at any of our services. We'll be happy to see you. May the Lord bless you until next time.